Lawrence Babuza squaring off against veteran Ricardo Vargas. Bob Papo along with Brian Adams and Steve Farhood. We're getting set for the IBF Eliminator. What do you think about this fight, Brian? Well, Ricardo Vargas, he has been in this situation before. Two years ago, he fought for the elimination bout. He lost on points. He allowed his opponent to use the ring and use movement and frustrate him. I'm not expecting that to happen tonight. Steve? Both of these guys looking for the same thing. Another fight, a second fight with Rafael Marquez. Best uh, phantom weight in the world. There's a lot at stake here. Well, Vargas, as he makes his entrance to the ring, went the distance with Marquez, got dropped in the 12th round, lost the unanimous decision last May. So at least he did go the distance. Mabuza got stopped. Vargas, former NABF Phantomweight champion, ranked number six by the IBF. As we take a look, Steve, at the tail of the tape, for this eliminator. Well, you see Mabuza with the reach advantage, but the key number there is the weight. Mabuza made weight about a week ago. Vargas over 120, his first trip to the scale. It took him over two hours to shed two pounds. We're using the unified rules for this title bout, Steve. Three judges scored a fight, 10-point must system. That's pretty standard. No three knockdown rule, no standing eight count. Only the doctor can stop the bout. And here comes silence. Well, he'd like to make some noise in this main event. His last fight on November the 5th in Nevada, knocked out in the fourth round by Rafael Marquez for the IBF Bantamweight Championship. Silence was down in round one, cut left eye round two, cut right eye round three. Referee stopped it. The fight before that, he was in against Cruz Carbajal in an IBF eliminator and won a unanimous decision. Many amateur bouts. Vargas, like many boxers from Mexico, very limited amateur experience. Jumped right into the pro game in 1989. Turned pro 10 years prior to Mabuza. Has been knocked out twice in his career. For the introduction, our ring announcer, Greg Dubin. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to DeBella Entertainment and HD Nets Broadway Boxing. Presented by the Turning Stone Resort and Casino from the Grand Ballroom at Manhattan Center. This bout is sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission chairman in attendance tonight, Ron Scott Stevens from the Grand Ballroom at Manhattan Center. Tonight's fight are promoted by DeBella Entertainment and sponsored by HBO Sports and the Connecticut Defenders, Connecticut's hometown team. This bout is also sanctioned by the IBF as an elimination bout for the number one ranking in the junior bantamweight division. IBF supervisor in attendance tonight, Lindsey Tucker. The three judges scoring this bout on the 10-point must system, Sparkle Lee, Luis Rivera, and Steve Weisfeld. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, Pete Santiago. And now, 12 rounds of boxing in the bantamweight division. Introducing first to my left, fighting out of the blue corner, he's wearing black trunks, weighing in officially at 118 pounds. His professional record consists of 39 wins, 11 losses, and three draws, three 13 wins coming by way of knockout from Tijuana, Mexico, Ricardo Chapo Vargas. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, his trunks, are patterned. Weighing in officially at 118 pounds, his professional record consists of 18 wins and just one loss. 15 wins coming by way of knockout from Johannesburg, South Africa. Silence, African Spice Mambuza. Explain to you, I walk, talk to you guys, both of you guys in the corners, okay? You have like a hotel in the esquina, in the cuarto hotel, okay? Yeah. I explain that the New York State Athletic Commission rules, okay? In the locker room, okay? I would like to clean fight. 
Watch the head and watch the low blows. Repliqué la obstrucción en la esquina también, ¿verdad? En el cuarto. Porque era una pelea limpia. ¿Ok? Ok. Shake hands. Good luck. So we're set for the IBF Bantamweight Eliminator. Silence Mabuza, raised by his mother and grandmother in South Africa. Ricardo Vargas, 388 rounds as a professional. He's only been stopped twice in his career. And that was way back in 1992. Alejandro Landeros and a real good fighter, Enrique Jupiter, stopped him in the fifth round. Mabuza stopped in his last bout, cuts. That's the only time he has been stopped. Well, you have to know about Vargas, Bob. When Johnny Tapia was undefeated, I thought Vargas was beating him. There was a clash of heads. The fight went to the this, to the cards after eight rounds, and it was a technical draw. But that's how good Vargas is, that he was able to go with Johnny Tapia, and Johnny Tapia's prime. Vargas got dropped in the sixth round of that fight, cut badly in the seventh. The scores, 68-64, and then a pair of 66s. Thus the draw. Well, sounds Mabuzu. I know his trainer, Nick Durant, trainer and manager, Nick Durant, real well. Had a chance to spend some time with him in Michigan. He trains all his fighters to be to be boxers first. But a lot of his fighters turn out to be aggressive boxers. Nick Durant says Sounds Mabuz is the best fighter he's ever worked with, and that's saying a lot because Nick Durant's really the top trainer in South Africa. Hey, he's worked with Hawk Makapula, Oyane Bungu. Philip and Dew. That's a pretty good stamp to give Mabuza. A little bit of a slow start here, Bob, and I think the reason it's slower than we expected is Vargas is usually kind of a pressure fighter, not a big puncher, but an aggressive guy, and he's moving around a lot right now. Twice, Vargas has challenged for the title. The aforementioned loss last year to Marquez. And back in 1993 against Jorge Julio, lost a 12 round majority decision for the WBA Bantamweight Championship. Yeah, this guy's tried to become a champion for a long time, and if he doesn't win this fight, I don't think he's ever going to get there. He's 34 years old. This is his 54th bout. Fill him out process here. You can't gauge much by what happens at the weigh-ins because a lot of boxers have different styles. But yesterday, Vargas. Time, in. time, time. We get a timeout. Yes, time in, but. A little extra Vaseline, and uh, you know, he was two pounds overweight, had to lose the weight. But it looked like, I mean, a stiff wind would have blown him over. <laughs> and maybe he was just trying to conserve his energy. Well, I guess that's the age-old argument. Is it better for him to have that 24 hours to rehydrate or uh, or not? And now he looks lively. We'll see if this goes 12, whether he looks lively in rounds 11 and 12. Mabuz has been here in the country for two weeks. Final seconds of a nondescript first round. Welcome back to Broadway Boxing. Round number two underway. Silence Mabuza and Ricardo Vargas. Vargas in the black trunks. His nickname Chapo down one side. You see across the front of the waistband it says Roman. That's his son. Down one of the sides of his trunks it says Sally. That's his wife. So he's well represented. Got the family well represented on the trunks with Tijuana, his hometown on the back. The first round was a little surprising to me. I, uh, I thought Vargas would come forward. Right now he's still in boxing mode, and I don't think Mabuza is as effective when he has to make the fight as when he can be a little bit more of a boxer. You know, you look at it as a feeling out round, a throwaway round. But if this fight's to go the distance, and it's a pretty close fight, that first round, depending on what you saw, Steve, you kind of leaned a little bit toward Mabuza. I gave it a even round. I don't think anybody did anything. But you know, you're, you're right. I mean, I, you know. Those are the kind of rounds though that can win a fight for you. Sure. It's like in baseball, you know. Games in April count the same as the games in September. That's right. You don't think about it.
because there's 162 of them. But suddenly when you lose a division by one game, you say, man, those two games we wasted in April against that <laughs> cellar dweller killed us. But see, what I, what I see here, Barkas is actually dictating the pace. He's dictating the fight. And that's why I scored the first round for him. I thought he did things that was uncustomary. Most Mexican fighters are head first, aggressive. I thought he changed the pattern there. And he confused Mubazo, Mubuzu somewhat. Vargas is not a huge puncher. 14 knockouts in 53 trips to the ring. He's coming off a knockout win against just a busy fight in Mexico. He actually had 34 of his 53 bouts in Mexico. So much movement from Vargas, it'll be very interesting to see if this is just temporary or if he's going to try to fight the whole fight this way. It's kind of an in and out style. I think it's temporary, um, Steve. I think around six, round six, round seven, eight, he's going to step it up and start being more aggressive. Who's controlling the tempo of this round? I like Vargas. I think Vargas is dictating the pace. Two rounds in the books, scheduled for 12. Punch Round number three getting set to start. Referee Pete Santiago wants the corner cleared from Mabuza. Guys, gotta get out of the corner quicker, right? Guys, let's get out of the corner a little quicker, okay? Thank you. Simon! Pete wants a tight ship. Pete Santiago taking charge. Is an in out, it is an in and out style here for Vargas right now. He'll jump in with a jab, jump out, jump back in with a hook. I'm a little worried about Butts, the way he jumps in and out. If Mabuza happens to be coming forward at the same time, these guys are going to clash heads, and they, they've both been cut in the past. Wouldn't surprise me if it happens again. See how Mabuza would cut. He's got those high cheekbones. Where he would be susceptible to cuts underneath the eyes, which are obviously not nearly as dangerous, but you get a lot of swelling. Well, he took nine stitches over the right eye from that Marquez fight, and that was a, a roughly six months ago. I like the jab that Vargas going. An offbeat rhythm jab. Ooh, nice right hand by Vargas. Steve, if you're Mabuza, Brian, if you're Mabuza, what do you have to do to change this tempo? Vargas has it going the way he wants, stylistically. Well, for starters, stop following the guy around. Cut the ring work. Cut the ring, work the body, and get the jab going. Right here, nice double jab in the right hand. I don't think Mabuza needs to change anything because I think he's in control. Maybe he's not controlling tempo, but I think he's landing the better shots. That's what makes this sport so difficult to judge. Mm -hmm. You've got two guys sitting next to you who see it differently. <laughs> and we have the same vantage point. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's also what, you know, your preference is. Some guys fancy technicians. Other guys fancy the heavier hitter. The right hand as Vargas was going back. Seems as if Mabuza stepped up the power a little bit in his punches here in round three. I agree, Bob, and I think he's he's the harder hitter. I think he had to because of the movement that Vargas was giving him. There's the butt. And they may have Vargas sounds for a minute. Mabuz has got the high cheekbones, Bob, and Vargas has the protruding forehead. So <laughs> something's going to give, I think. Oh, 
Final 10 seconds of round number three. Scheduled 12 rounder. It's an IBF Bantamweight Eliminator. Silence Mabuza and Ricardo Vargas. Welcome back to Broadway Boxing. Bob Papa along with Brian Adams and Steve Farhood ringside. Round number four underway in this Bantamweight IBF Eliminator, Silence Mabuza and Ricardo Vargas. No knockdowns so far in the bout. Even pace bout. And here's referee Pete Santiago. Wants the glove checked out. Oh, no mouthpiece. Oh, no mouthpiece. You need two in New York, and he had none. <laughs> hey, we're joined at ringside by Fali Malanaji. Is that who that is? He'll be playing the big stage at Madison Square Garden. How's it going, Paul? I'm good, man. How's everything going with you guys? You excited about the fight? I'm very excited. I can't wait to get it on. Paulie, uh, known you a while, seeing you fight a little bit. The idea of you fighting the biggest fight of your life in Madison Square Garden of all settings, that has to turn you on like nothing else that's happened in your career so far oh yeah without a doubt i mean you start boxing for these opportunities and uh to get a world title fight still being undefeated i'm looking forward to winning the title remaining undefeated for a long long time i'm the kind of fighter that steps up to the plate and uh june 10th that's what i'm going to be doing but knowing you poorly the way i know you um to tell tell the viewers what's more important to you have an opportunity to opportunity to showcase or to win the world title for me, I mean, it's a little bit of both, but winning the world title is the most important thing to me because I want to go down in history. My ultimate goal is to be one of the best fighters to put on a pair of boxing gloves, so winning world titles is definitely a part of that, but a, a chance to showcase myself in front of the whole world and to prove all the doubters wrong against a fighter that, for the most part, everybody thinks is an elite fighter, and uh, outclassing him is, is going to put me at that level. What do you make of this fight so far? It's been pretty even temper. It looks like Mabuza trying to get some power shots in as Vargas steps in with a hook. But Vargas early, kind of in and out kind of movement. Now, yeah, now it seems like Vargas is getting a little more aggressive. He's staying in there a little more. Early on, it seemed like he was uh, giving a lot of movement. Good body shot. Yeah, it's been a real good round so far for Vargas. This is for elimination for the number two spot. An opportunity like this don't come along too often. Here you have Vargas Pauly. This is his second opportunity at 34 years old. I mean, what do you make of that? Well, I, I think he's shown that he's hungry to get this last chance. I mean, like you said, these opportunities don't come too often. So the fact that he's 34 years old, he realizes this could be his last chance at getting a world title shot. So he knows how much is on the line tonight, and he's fighting like it. All right, within these four rounds, give me a prediction. Who do you think wins? Um, I, I like Mabuza's style. I, I think he's the younger, faster, quicker guy, and uh, I think he's going to pull it out. But uh, don't count Vargas out because he's a hungry guy. But I, I just like Mabuza overall. I've seen him fight before, he, he, and I, I'm very impressed with him. Steve, uh, Vargas has done some nice things. He almost stepped into a straight right hand. And uh, the nice things have come, Bob, when he's turned aggressive. That's not coincidental. Round number four. Round number five underway. Bob Papa, Brian Adams, Steve Farhood, and Paulie Malinaji joins us. And we got the big fight, Madison Square Garden on the 10th. What are the keys for you winning that fight? Well, I, I just think you have to be smart. Uh, Miguel Cotto has a lot of flaws, and people refuse to see them because they get uh, overhyped by the highlight reel knockouts that he does get. But Miguel Cotto has plenty of flaws. And uh, believe me, June 10th, I'm going to expose every single one of them. There's not one flaw I'm not going to expose on Miguel Cotto. <laughs> I'm going to beat him that badly. And uh, anybody that wants to laugh about that, anybody wants to talk about that, just come watch the fight June 10th. I'll laugh last all the time, and I'll continue to laugh last come June 10th. What do you think the crowd's going to be like? The crowd is going to be crazy. The crowd is going to be there loud, and that's the way I love it. Whether I get booed, whether I get cheered, I mean, I'm expecting a little bit of both. I can care less. I just love the electricity. I love the electricity in the crowd. As long as there's noise, I'm at my best. It, it, it sends a, a, like a current electric charge through my body, man. It's like an unexplainable high, really. And uh, I'm looking forward to it, man. And I'm looking forward to putting on a, the, the greatest performance of my career, painting my masterpiece on that night. Steve, it's going to be one of the few times in Garden history that a native New Yorker 
might not have the full crowd behind him. That's exactly right. I think of uh, when Davey Moore fought Roberto Duran, and Davey Moore got booed, and he was yeah. from the Bronx. Yeah, and I remember Hamed and Kevin Kelly also. Same and, uh, thing, yeah. Hamed had more people for him. What a night that's going to be on the Garden, because you're going to have Paulie, who I would think has some Italian fans along the way. <laughs> Miguel Cotto, who half of Puerto Rico is going to be there, and then you're going to have John Duddy on the card, who brings half of Ireland there. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little crowded in the Garden. I guarantee you Paulie will get the Irish vote, though. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, I like that. But Paulie, I have to ask, the biggest question for me, mm -hmm. every time you step in the ring, mm -hmm. are the hands. Yeah, and uh, it's definitely a question everybody's entitled to ask, Brian. I mean, you've been through it, so, uh, you know, a lot of the advice you gave me, I really kept in mind. You've been through a lot of the same injuries, so, uh, you know, I, I always keep you in mind when, when it comes to talking about these things. But, uh, you know, I've, I've come to the point where it's pretty much healthy, and I didn't feel any pain training for my last fight, during my last fight, or training for this fight so far. So uh, I'm kind of leaving it up to everybody else to worry about that. I don't worry about that anymore because it's, it's really the furthest thing from my mind, especially when I'm training. I'm very focused on what I have to accomplish, and that's beating Cotto. That's how it should be. Thanks. Steve, what about Mabuza here in this round against Vargas? Well, this, this round uh, has gone back to the way it was earlier in the fight with Vargas kind of jumping in and out. Vargas won the, the fourth round by being aggressive. He's not being aggressive this round, but I still think he's winning the round. So uh, Vargas showing a little bit of uh, versatility here, winning more than one way. Yeah, I agree. I, I think um, he brought a lot of confusion into the ring with him tonight. <laughs> it sounds very confused. He's mixing it up, moving forward, in and out, boxing. I like his performance. And he might be confusing Mabuza a little bit by switching it up like that also. Round number six underway. Silence Mabuza and Ricardo Vargas at stake in IBF Eliminator. This one's scheduled for 12. No knockdowns. Nobody's been hurt. I hate to sound psychic here, but in the open, I said that experience from his last bout when he was in the elimination position will play a big role. He, he allowed his opponent to outwork him, use the ring, and confuse him. Now he's doing the same thing tonight. What does Mabuza, and we'll start with you, Paulie Malinaji, what does Mabuza have to do to get this fight going in his direction? Well, I, I just think he needs to keep his composure a little bit. It seems like he's getting confused by uh, Vargas' uh, antics, so to speak, by switching it up. I mean, Vargas sometimes gets aggressive, and sometimes Vargas starts backing up. I think Mabuza just relax a little bit and just see what the openings are and, and take advantage of them. It seems like he's a little over-aggressive at times when he's walking into punches. He's got the height. Is, is he not using his jab enough to control some distance in punching range? Yeah, I believe so. And also, it seems like he's pushing that jab out there when he does use it. And he should really put a little snap on it. It'll set up, it'll set up all the punches if he does it in that way. See, like that. It, that that's a good jab you want. That's the, one, that's the jab you want to use against Vargas. And you see how I set up that right hand. Brian? I mean, I agree. Good assessment. He has to use a good jab. Don't just flick it out there. When you get close, know what he want to do. Don't be confused. Know exactly what you want to do when you get there. And when he stops jabbing is when uh, Vargas is taking advantage of him. Swelling under both of Mabuza's eyes. Something to look for in the second half of the fight. This is a marathon. This is 12. I just love the work ethic right now of Vargas. Let's fight like a hungry fighter. Fighting like, a, fighting like a fighter that knows this is last chance. Both boxers went 12 rounds two fights ago. Mabuza defeated Cruz Carvajal in an eliminator, and Vargas lost to the world champion Rafael Marquez in 12. And if you made a list of the 10 hardest punchers pound for pound in boxing, Rafael Marquez would be on that list, I promise you. See right there. Silent should never have backed up. He threw a nice combination, landed three out of the four shots, and he backed up. Stay close, and when you get there, know what you want to do. Of the final 20 seconds of this sixth round. Joined by Paulie Malinaji. Paulie, best of luck on June the 10th against Miguel Cotto, Madison Square Garden. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. Good I'll bring back that title to New York. All right, good to have you with us. Thank you, Paulie. Always a pleasure. Coming to the midway point of the bout, Mabuza and Vargas, scheduled for 12. Ah! 
Second half of the bout underway. Round number seven in a scheduled 12 rounder with Silence Mabuza and Ricardo Vargas in an IBF Bantamweight Eliminator. Vargas had trouble making weight yesterday. Needed a little over two hours to get almost two and a half pounds off. Oh, Pete Santiago getting on our cameraman. Pete is in control. <laughs> cameraman said, move, Pete. <laughs> Okay, but the key here for me, what I see here, guys, silence have to work work behind his jab. He's a stiff jab. Because right now, Vargas appears to be in, in, in some sort of a rhythm. So work behind the jab. But don't just pull with the jab. What do you mean by pull with the jab? Don't pull with the jab. Meaning don't just flick it out there. Extend it. Put your shoulder into it. Something else to look for. Mabuza does have the ability to turn southpaw. He's done that in a few of his fights. Be curious to see just to change things up if he tries that. Right hand to the ear landed by Vargas. Mabuza trying to counter, but a hippity hop style there from Vargas. He's bouncing in and out, and Mabuza can't line him up. He's in a rhythm. Work your jab. Get him off that rhythm. He's waiting for Vargas to initiate the action before he punches. Steve, would you call this so far a crafty performance by Vargas? Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised at how he's fought. I thought he'd be much more aggressive. But he does have the ability to fight more than one way. It's been very crafty. Neither guy is the biggest puncher in the world. I think Mabuza might be a slightly harder puncher. But that's one of the problems both of these guys have when they fight Rafael Marquez, who's a brutal puncher. They just can't match him for, for power. And, I, you know, I've said it a million times, I'm going to say it again when the little guys fight. The biggest misconception in boxing is that guys this size can't punch. Some of the greatest knockout artists in history have come from the Bantamweight division. Carlos Zarate, Alfonso Zamora, Ruben Olivares. It's a long list. And uh, the people who think flyweights and bantamweights can't punch, well, they're just wrong. These guys might not be the biggest punchers, but in general, they can punch. Sounds Mabuzu just went south for. On cue, huh? Another sign of confusion for me. If he's searching for something, some combination to get himself going. <laughs> Round number eight underway. Nick Durant telling Silence Mabuza the jab. Guys, we saw it when he used the jab emphatically and he followed up with the right hand. He was able to do some things, but he's just not using it enough. And I think I can see why, because Vargas is, Bob, you called it a hippity, hippity hop style that's perfectly described. It's like he's like a metronome. He's left, he's right, he's left, he's right. You know, where do you jab? <laughs> I guess in the middle, right? The jab straight. When he hop in towards you, he's going to come right into the jab. Brian, if you were in the ring against a guy of this style, I mean, you just aim for his chest? Aim for his chest, aim for his shoulders. He has to leap to you. He has to come forward. Meanwhile, while Mabuz is confused, Vargas digs in and does some work. Vargas been effective to the body where Mabuza has almost done no body work in this fight. And that's a little surprising. You know your opponent had trouble making weights. You know he's 34, and you know he has almost 400 rounds of experience. You would think part of the game plan would be get to the body and let's see what he has left in those legs. But you, you would think so. And Nick Durant, I saw him earlier tonight, and he said he didn't think Vargas was weakened by the, uh, the experience of, of taking off two pounds at the weigh-in. And so far, Nick Durant is right, because Vargas shows no signs of being a tired fighter. That's what I mean, like when I said earlier, when you get there, know what you want to do. Vargas got close, kept his hands free, and he, he, let, it, he let his hands go and work. Whereas Salas tried to tie him up. Guys, at least 
least according to my scorecards through seven rounds. Mabuza has to get something going in a hurry because Vargas, at least the way I see it, is just stockpiling rounds here in a very methodical, easygoing fashion based on his terms. It's nothing flashy, but it's effective. Yeah, he's he's effectively awkward is what he is, and I still think this fight is going to be won in the last third. Plenty, long way to go here. Five rounds to go, four and a half anyway. I think frustration was was set in with Salmon. Mabuzu. There's too much time in between shots. No jab. He should be working the jab. Those corners told him all the right things. Yeah, Nick, Nick Devron is smart and honest. He might have to start getting loud through eight. Action from round eight. A couple of low blows and an overhand right. That's a, that's a tough combination to defend against. You see wh whether these left hooks are low. The second one definitely isn't. All right, second go. But boy, it's awfully it up, much guys. easier to hit a guy in the head after you've hit him a couple of times to the body. Pete Santiago said keep him up, but the damage is done. But. Round number nine underway. Silence Mabuza and Ricardo Vargas in an IBF Bantamweight Eliminator. Bob Papa, Brian Adams, Steve Farhood ringside here on Broadway Boxing. Mabuzu do have the power. He does have the power to knock Vargas out. If he listens to the corner and work behind his jab. I just think Vargas is real hard to hit with a jab. You know, his, his distance is constantly changing. He bends at the knees real well, so he gets low. And you jab, you go right over his head or off his shoulder. And he goes side to side well. So I think he's real hard to hit with the jab. The key to it, an effective jab is to put your shoulder into it and step in. Towns Mabuzu, it would serve him well not to step in when he jabbed. Stand his ground and just jab. Because Vargas is in and out. So you don't want to step in. When he uses an effective jab, it works. Vargas down. And I don't know about that. I thought that Mabuza stepped on his foot. I'm with you, Bob. I, and, you know, that is huge. We don't, at least I don't have this fight maybe as close as the judges do. And that's huge. That makes this a two-point round if Mabuza does anything the rest of the way. Just landed a nice uppercut. But why? He landed a nice uppercut and a nice straight right hand, and he stepped back. Kind of funny, though, that Mabuza landed his best two shots in, like, three rounds right after a questionable knockdown. Maybe it was real. He bears the jab. This is the first time in a while we've seen Mabuza put several punches together. Even if they miss, it set something up. Well, maybe he was energized by the knockdown, you know? He might not even know if it was uh, legit or not. Right hand by Vargas. And one thing we've said before on this show, the judges have to go by what the referee says. If the judges clearly saw that as a trip or a slip, they cannot score accordingly. They have to go by what the referee says. But they also have the discretion if they don't think Mabuza dominated the round, they could make it just a 10-9 round. And I bet you that's exactly what they do, Bob. Take a look at it. See if the feet got tangled up or if it was a knockdown. Vargas throws a right hand. Yeah, look at that. The, yeah, the right foot of Mabuza's foot looked like it was on the left foot of Vargas. Yeah, it was a combination of that and a punch. You'll see it again. Mm. 
No. No, not that, not from that angle. No, good job by our cameraman. And the guys in the truck, Dan Myers and Jason Vaughn, our director, for getting us a shot. Actually, he never did step on the foot. So it's a good knockdown. Now, obviously, we give Pete Santiago a lot of credit because he saw it without the benefit of our cameras and replays. Round number 10 underway. And if they did score that round, 10-8 for Mabuza, suddenly the cards take a different look. Yeah, that's critical what the judges will decide to do with that round. They do not have monitors. Sounds like Booz was coming out a little aggressive this round. Fewer punches though from Vargas. Maybe, you know, maybe, just maybe, that, that weight loss as we get later in the fight takes its toll. I haven't seen any signs to date, but we're late now. Turns 35 in September. But over on his bout, Vargas' defense Ooh, that was oh, that was real low. low. So now Mabuza will have time to regroup. Marcus goes right back down to the body. <laughs> That's a veteran move, huh? This looks a lot more like the Silas Mabuza of the first three rounds when he was the aggressor. He's working behind the jail. Probably coincides with the fact that he's been a little bit busier these last couple of rounds. My boost is doing a lot of missing now. He may be busy, but he's not landing a high percentage. Right before the low blow, I want to point out that Vargas' defense tonight overall has been deceptively um, good. Mm -hmm. well, Booz has been a little bit busy. I wouldn't call it Ray Oliveira busy, but. of this bout has changed a little bit in round number nine Vargas went down questionable knockdown our replay showed it was the accurate call by referee Pete Santiago did the referees give that round a 10-8 round for Mabuza Mabuza pretty good in round number 10 suddenly these cards tightening up at least ours are they have a score at 96 to 93 in favor of Vargas and I have 95-94 for Mabuza. Brian, I disagree. It's not a rarity. And I have 96-94 for Vargas with the first round dead even because, in my opinion, nothing happened other than they were introduced and they spent three minutes in the <laughs> ring together. <laughs> well, we may mention that Salas Mabuza's output has went up the past couple rounds. That's the key with someone who's awkward. You just want to throw punches. You throw 10 punches, you're bound to land something. Let's have a Pennell Whitaker or, or, or Willie Pepper from the <laughs> right. Vargas ripped 
the hook to the bottom. One thing I know is the past couple rounds, Vargas has stopped with the herky jerky motion. Look like that hook to the body affected the bruiser a little bit. All the, all the effective body work in this fight has come from Vargas, that's for sure. Said nobody could grab momentum in this fight, really, because uh, Mabuza had some in rounds uh, 9 and 10. And so far, with uh, about a minute to go here, I think Vargas is controlling this 11th round. You agree, Brian? Not much going on, but I would say the range generalship is, is in favor of Vargas right now. But not much really going on. Booz is allowing Vargas, for the most part, in this round, to get inside. He's not making a pay at all. Yeah, that's the jab. Nice body shot. Throw the forearm as well. Well, Vargas with a better round 11. And an IBF fan of weight eliminator. Abuja, Vargas. 12th and final round. Silence Mabuza and Ricardo Vargas. In an IBF fan of weight eliminator. Vargas dropped in round 9. Flash knockdown. Didn't seem to be seriously hurt. It seemed as if he was more off balance than anything else, but it's still a knockdown. They need the guy coming out like they need this last round. Steve, you have a dead even now going into this round? I indeed do. 104 104, and I scored that ninth round 10 8 from Abuza. It's a little cheating because I had the, uh, you know, the, the luxury of the replay. Yeah. yeah, you and I both had the same cheat. I have Vargas up by three, 106, 103 with one round even. I have it 106, 102 for Vargas. I just think overall Vargas showed the veteranship that he has, 53 bouts, his experience. And Rain General ship. Concerned Mabuza corner. They're disappointed because their man didn't right, jab strike, enough strike, and was right, not right. busy enough. Good left hand by Vargas. I just look at it, look at it as one guy having a solid game plan, another guy don't. And that one guy will be Vargas. Mabuza is really not able to make the necessary adjustments. And his corner told him all the right things, Stephen Bryan. But he just, in the ring, didn't seem to be able to pull the trigger at times. Well, let me, let me try to sell this to you guys. And you tell me if you're buying. There are fights sometimes where you have one guy three or four points ahead. And if it goes to the other guy, you think it's a robbery. If this goes to Mabuza, would you call it a robbery? No, but I'd be disappointed. Okay. I would be disappointed. It depends on what the numbers are, too. I mean, if they have it like 118, 111, then it's a robbery. But you can see one point either way. Even with the first round I had even, you give that to Mabuza, and suddenly your numbers look a little different. Right? Both guys have been pretty busy for a 12th round here. I'm going to give the round to Vargas so far, though. Vargas the land. Nice overhand right. Short left hook. But the corner has told Silence Mabuza to write the right instructions. But, but sometimes as a boxer, you have in your mind is going to go a certain way. And you forget about what the corner is telling you once you get in there. Sometimes it's easier said than done, too, huh, Brian? Exactly. Great finish. Excellent performance from Silence Mabuza and Ricardo Vargas in an IBF 
Bantamweight Eliminator. 12 hard rounds. Pretty close fight. Vargas dropped in the ninth. But Brian, you and I kind of in agreement that Vargas, for the most part, did the better work controlling the tempo. A little bit busier. Mabuza hit with some of the bigger shots. But it seemed as if, at least according to you and I, Vargas was a little bit more consistent. Steve, I think, had it even going into the last round, and he was given the last round to Vargas, so even he has Vargas by a point. Yeah, I think a good performance by Vargas. He came in. Sounds Mabuzu was the favorite on paper, but he came in with a game plan. I think he did an excellent job. I had him winning 116, 111. I had it 116, 112. Both guys fought to the finish in this 12-round IBF eliminator in the Bantamweight division. Good showing by Mabuza and Vargas. We'll get the judge's decision after this. We're back on Broadway Boxing from the Manhattan Center in Manhattan, New York. Bob Papa, Brian Adams, Steve Farhood, Silence Mabuza and Ricardo Vargas. Tough 12-round IBF Bantamweight eliminator. It goes to the judge's scorecards with the decision. Greg Dubin. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. But first, a round of applause for the fighters. <laughs> Judge Sparkle Lee has it, 120-107. Judge Luis Rivera has it, 117-110. And Judge Steve Weisfeld has it, 117-110. The winner, by way of unanimous decision, and now the number one ranked IBF bantamweight contender, Silence African Spurs Mabuza. Well, I got a problem with that, Brian. I have a problem with 120 to 107 and even 117, 110 twice. I mean, I hope that the judges watch this with the volume off, not to get swayed by what we were saying but reevaluate it uh, because I, I don't see how it could have been that dominant. I mean, it, if it's one point either way, two points, fine. But 120, 107? According to the judges, he dominated tonight. Well, I, didn't, I didn't see that. I'm well, speechless, though. Well, watch it again. Turn off the volume so you don't get jaded by our commentary and our thoughts. Even Steve, who thought Babuza had some edges along the way, had it close, and even Vargas winning it late. But watch it without the volume and then judge it again for yourself. I, 120, 107 to me is outlandish. Outlandish. But Mabuza wins it 19-1 and one on his career. And now he's the number one contender. He'll get another shot at Marquez, who he got stopped in four rounds by. Back on November the 5th in State Line, Nevada. Silence Mabuza in a clean sweep of the judges. Steve Farhood is with the African Spice. Silence, watching the fight, my two colleagues and I thought it was a very close fight. Did you feel you won as clearly as the judges thought? Yeah, look, the fight was very close. I mean, because the boy, he came to fight. I mean, look, he's a veteran, he's been around. So he came to fight, gave him a good fight, but then, as for the decision, yes, I think I've won the fight. But did you think you won as clearly as the judges thought? I will never dispute the judge's decision. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a quick look at the uh, Turning, Stone, Turning uh, Stone Resort and Casino uh, highlight of the fight. This is the knockdown. I think I believe it's a left hook. No, it was a right hand. It was a right hand that uh, had knocked him down there. At, when we first saw it, we thought there might be a chance that your feet were tangled, but, but it was a legitimate it knockdown. A lift hook. It was a genuine knockdown. It was a left hook, then I followed with the right. But then the right was not that powerful, but the left hook really caught him. You can check now. Silence, you came all the way from Johannesburg for a chance to fight and win here so that you can get Rafael Marquez and get another title fight. You feel there is some unfinished business there, no? Exactly. Look, the only reason why I came here is not only to fight uh, Vargas, but it's to, it's to prepare for my case because, look, we've got an unfinished business with my case. I will still want to go there and show that I'm the best now in the world. You had the chance. It's my time now. Silence Mabuza. He thought it was a close fight. So did we. He's the winner. He gets the shot at Rafael Marquez. Bob? Steve, even his corner thought it was a close fight because we went to the corner in between specific rounds. We heard his own trainer, Nick Durant, say, you're letting 